Let the church say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Let the church say praise the Lord. It is without question that we have been blessed by the matchless messianic master and that he willingly and ably went to the cross of Calvary and died for the sins of all mankind. And it is based upon that perspective that the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 1. He said that I am a debtor to the Jew and also to the Greek. They said, for I am now ready to preach to you the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For those of you that are watching us this morning that may not share in our religious conviction, we would have you to know, first of all, this morning that we are a Bible-believing church. And this comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, where the Bible says that if any man speak, let him speak as are the oracles of God. So we have come together this morning with the express purpose to show the difference between truth and error, that you may fully understand what it means to obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Bible says that though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Paul picks up the baton and says, you that are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord shall be revealed from heaven in vengeance with his mighty angel, taking vengeance on those that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Paul again says, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you and being then made free from sin you became the servants of righteousness so it is our prayer that somebody might choose to make today their day to obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before it is everlastingly too late y'all doing all right this morning y'all doing all right this morning can I tell you, you might not know it, but can I tell you something? I'm going to let you in on a little secret. God been good to you. Amen. God been good to you. And as the as Elder Coffee said earlier, let everything they got breath. I'm looking around and here this morning and look like everybody is breathing. So everybody ought to have a praise on their mind on this morning. God has been protecting you. God has been keeping you. God has been providing for you. And you can't thank God for nothing. Just thank God for thinking about you. When you woke up this morning, you was on God's mind. When you stepped out of the bed this morning, you was on God's mind. When you got in the car to come to worship this morning, you was on God's mind. He was orchestrating the affairs of your life and protecting you from danger, sin, and unseen. You got something to be thankful for this morning. You got something to be thankful for. Amen. I, I'm just so glad to see um, those of you that I have not seen since I've been here. And I'm just so glad that God has blessed us to a place where now we are um, things are opening back up shortly but surely, and as we continue to take the necessary precautions that we need to take, I'm just glad to be back in God's house, because let me tell you, there's nothing like fellowship among your brothers, and since I don't know about y'all, but you know, you missed up like fellowship time, just get up and go and hug and even somebody had you you miss coming to worship service and no matter what you have been through during that past weekend you have the opportunity to just sit there and somebody sit beside you and they just sing to the top of their lungs not knowing that you are encouraging one another through your singing it, it's something to come into the house of God you can get a you can get a word online but it's something just to sit in the house of God at the feet of the man of God and hear the word of God I need to hear a word from God that's gonna bless my my life that's going to stir my spirit, that's going to wake up my soul. It's just something about being in God's house. I'm preaching already. I just ain't got to the mess. We, it's just something about being in God's house in the presence of God. So I know what David meant now when he said, I was glad when they said to me. Oh man, I ain't been able to get to the house of God. They didn't put rules. They didn't put out regulation. But man, now that I got an opportunity to go up in God's house after everything that I done been through, you think I'm going to let the devil stop me from coming into God's house and giving him the praise that is due? God is good. And he's worthy to be paid. So, 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 if this has not taught you anything else, it's taught you how to appreciate the value. That it's taught you how to appreciate the, the opportunities that you do have. Because, can I tell you, people right now over in China are being put in prison because they're trying to go to church. Church buildings are being torn down. 
Preachers are being drugged out of their homes and taken into prison simply because people want to worship God. And then we over here, we can worship God freely and don't want to give God half the praise. Yeah, come on now. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. Come on now. Amen, amen. God is good. God is good. God is going this morning. Somebody got to tell it. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord? Yeah. Right, that was half of y'all. Anybody come to hear a word from yeah. the Lord this morning? Yeah. Amen. I, I believe you came to the right place. Follow me to the book of 2 Corinthians. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. And we're going to commence our reading at verse number 1 and conclude at verse number 8. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away. But the word of God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We're coming here in the book of 2 Corinthians. No scholars seem to argue the authenticity of this book. It is seemingly everybody agrees that the Apostle Paul wrote this book because there's so much personal information that he includes in this letter. Somewhere between 1 and 2 Corinthians, some trouble has risen up. Uh, maybe it's because his son in the Gospel, Timothy, has just visited that congregation there, and he has come back to let him know that there's some trouble that has arose in the house of God. He has let him know that there are some super apostles, some false apostles that have went out trying to build up their own kingdom. And the Apostle Paul comes about to let them know, hey, y'all, I know all of this stuff is going on, but you need to hold on to the faith that you already have. You need to stay faithful and hold on to the gospel that you have already heard. So it is that point, it is at that place that we enter into the word of God this morning. Second Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse number 1, the Bible says, Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are also comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for our consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and for your salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye also be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us while we were in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even for our own lives. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Would you pray with me? Father God in heaven, it is indeed that we are grateful for this opportunity to come and feast at the table of your word. Father, now I ask that you would hide me behind your glorious cross. Father, that no flesh would take any glory in what you ought to give and what you ought to receive. But Father, at the end of it, may you receive all the glory, all the praise, and all the thanks which you are so worthy of. In the name of Jesus, we pray that all God's children say, Amen. Amen. While staying in your social distance guideline, just look over at somebody and ask them, can you stand the pressure? Can you stand the pressure? In my text this morning, we are dealing with the Apostle Paul. He is the epitome of strength. He is a bulwark of faith. Up under his ministry, he has began to evangelize the final frontiers of Christianity. Having approached the Jews and them largely rejecting him, and even those that accepted the other apostles were beginning to apostatize. He had found a fruitful place of evangelizing the Gentiles. His ministry was booming because they that are not sick need not a physician. But it was booming in the refuse of human pain. He was flourishing in the places of idolatry and bigotry and sexual immorality. And his message was well received by broken people who accepted his message, but were hard to leave. They followed him on broken legs, and when your followers are crippled, you can feel the weight of every addition that connects with them. 
And so the Apostle Paul, he was eloquent of speech. He was intellectually fluent. He was intelligent. He was articulate. He was well-spoken. He was respected as a sage in his age. He was philosophically astute. He ran around with other thinkers of his era and was respected for his intellectual depth. And yet, in spite of his intellectual depth and his spiritual prowess began so strong that he could stop speaking and walk down the steps and raise a man from the dead without losing a step in what he was doing. He is not a wimp, so don't think Paul is a wimp. He, he was stoned at Lystra and left for dead. He had, he had been attacked by serpents. He had withstood the jail cells and came out. But he said, I finally came to something that was above my weight load. I don't care how strong you are, people of God. I don't care how resourceful you are. Sooner or later, you will run into something for which you have not been rated for. Yes, On a job. When you deal with certain types of pipes and certain types of hoses, they have something called a PSI rating. It is the pounds per square inch and how much pressure that thing can hold. And if you add more pressure than the PSI on the object, poof, it's going to burst because of the pressure. And, and the Apostle Paul, he was eloquent in speech. He, he had all of this stuff going on. But the Apostle Paul came to something for which he could not handle. It is like the opportunity or the agony of having to go back to a weight load that we got to bear by ourselves. That, that might have been how Jesus felt when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. You remember that? Come on and go with me. This is too much for me. Will thou watch for me but for one hour? How many of you have ever been disappointed because the people you were counting on to watch with you walked off and left you by yourself? And you wouldn't have minded being by yourself, but being by yourself was too heavy and the pressure got too great and you can't open up to anybody. And I defy you this morning to tell me that you are so spiritual that you can't relate to what I'm saying. Because if you got spiritual, you got spiritual from reading the word of God. And here's the guy that wrote over half of the New Testament. And if the guy who wrote it says, life almost killed me. You can't tell me that the man or woman that's reading it can say, don't nothing in this world bother me. If Jesus, who died for your sins, got a weight load so heavy that he begged the disciple, y'all wake up and go through this thing with me. They fell asleep on him. Then you're not going to tell me that your heart doesn't ache when people fall asleep and leave you carrying the weight load by yourself. He says, I was pressed above measure. He said, I had more pressure on me. Then I could even count. And you'd be surprised at the folk even in this room this morning who got more pressure on them than they can handle right now. Some of them right now, they just about to bust open with depression and bust open with anxiety and bust open with worry and stress and grief and all this stuff going on. If pressure will bust a steel pipe. Come on. What you think it'll do for you? They're smiling. Good morning. Praise the Lord. How you doing today? Oh, you look nice in blue. Oh, you look nice in that dress. You look nice. You look lovely in what you have going on. And nobody knows that the top of your head is about to come off because you're under so much pressure. Life itself is pressure. Age is pressure. Love is pressure. We keep asking for stuff and stuff is pressure. Oh, Lord, I want children. Lord, I want you to bless me with some children. I don't know, but I'm sure having children ain't nothing but pressure. Lord, I, Lord, I, I, Lord, I, I want, Lord, I want a husband. Not knowing that a man is. Lord, I, I want you to send me a good woman. Not knowing that a woman is. Say it right, say it right, she's pressure. I want to be married by the time I'm 30. You want to have it not knowing that all of that stuff. Look, I want to get another job. I want to own my own business. I want to be a CEO. Not knowing that all of that stuff brings about pressure. Never understanding that more power is more pressure. 
and all of a sudden, without ever stopping to measure what you have going on, you find yourself broken. Unable to stand under the weight load that you have in life. In fact, the reason the Apostle Paul was writing to Corinth is because they were angry because he wasn't coming. That even though I'm your leader, Paul says, I'm going through a little something. And can I tell you that even leaders go through trouble times? That's why it's important that you pray for your elders. That's why it's important that you pray for your deacons, your minister, and everybody that stands in any position of authority of leadership. Because the devil ain't after the tail, he's after the head. And if he can get the head, he know the rest of it is going to fall behind it. I need this, and I need that, and you're going to need this, and you got to have that, and you got to do that. How many people are giving more than what they are taking? And you're under so much pressure, and then there's pressure that comes from the guilt of being under pressure. The guilt of being inadequate, of not being enough for all that you took on. I took on this assignment. I don't want to fail. I, I don't want to, I don't want to make anybody disappointed. The guilt from being tired. You ever felt bad for being tired? The guilt of being empty. And feeling void on the inside, the gift from being, the gift from being beyond your strength. And yeah. the original language, it is ectunimus, which means out of power. I, I don't have no more. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. I'm running on empty. Yes, sir. Some folk came to the house of God this morning running on empty. Running on you. I barely got anything left. And Lord, if you don't help me right now, I don't know what I'm going to do. That's right. Running on you. I ain't got no more. And, and you know what? I know when, I, I, know when I, I have done some of my best preaching. Because when I do some of my best preaching, the people leave encouraged, but I leave empty. Come on now. Let it all out. The people leave encouraged, they're satisfied, they got a smile on their face because the courage that I had, I gave it to you. So you got encouraged, but then the virtue goes out of the speaker. And you remember when Jesus said, who touched me? Yeah. Who touched me? The virtue flows from the giver. It comes out of the giver. The virtue goes out of the giver, not out of the receiver. So when you are a giver, after you have given, there's a depletion that is inerrant in every person that is a giver. That you have to absorb the collateral damage of always being available to other people. But you can never be there for your own self. Can I, can I drop some off y'all this morning? Can, can, I, can, can I drop some off y'all this morning? So, so, so the more effective somebody is, the more empty they become. See, my car right now is about full on gas. It's about full. You know why it's about full? I ain't really been nowhere this week. Come on now. It's full right now. Because I haven't really been anywhere this week. I didn't go anywhere. And the more you drive it, the emptier it's going to become. If you've been drove hard, then you have become empty. And the problem with you is that you know how to work better than you know how to ask God for help. And you can literally burn up around people that love you. It's not that they don't love you. But they never imagined that the apostle could be tied, the, the elder could be tied, the, the deacon could be tied, the, the preacher could be tied. Mama, mama is always going to be mama. Mama is just like that. You know how mama is. She's just see when you're good at whatever you do. One way that you know that you're good at what you do is when people take you for granted. Come on. Watch out. Lord have mercy. Watch out. Come on. When people take you for granted. And they don't really appreciate you. That's when you know that you're good at what you're doing. Oh, 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 I, I got to stop. Let me stop this somewhere. So, 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 come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Now, now, Peter, James, and John, I need you. I'm going through something. All through the rest of the Bible, you needed me. I healed you. I blessed you. I taught you. I fed you. I 
fed yes, you. Sir. I protected you. Yes, I made a way for you. Yes. This is one time that I need y'all. I'm going through something, man. Come on and go with me and watch for one hour. I need you. You got my back. I need you to cover me. I'm going through something. I am pressed beyond measure. I'm going through the Garden of Gethsemane. And I carried you because we got a covenant. And I figured that if I would do something for you, that this is the least that you would be able to do for me. That, that if I give it to you, surely out of all of my disciples, I took you everywhere. I did everything with you. If I can't count on nobody else, I know I ought to be able to count on you. I didn't take Andrew. I didn't take Bartholomew or none of them. I brought you with me because I took you places. I didn't take nobody else. I took you to the Mount of Transfiguration. I did all kinds of stuff for you. I knew I could count on you. And the truth of the matter is, church, can I tell you something? When you get to the Garden of Gethsemane, you got to go alone. Come on now. When you get to the Garden of Gethsemane, you got to go alone. Gethsemane was a place where olives grew. As I was blessed to go and spend my last semester abroad all over Italy, everywhere you go, all you saw were olive trees. Everywhere you go, all the hills, it was so beautiful just to look out and see groves and groves and groves of olive trees. And Gethsemane is a place where the olives grew. And under pressure, people you thought would never forsake you People you had a right to expect to be there will turn around and get selfish and say, I'm sleeping. So y'all just be sleeping over there. They'll sleep. All three of them asleep. They'll sleep to my crisis, but want me to be awake to their crisis. They'll sleep to my need, but they want me to meet every one of their needs. They'll sleep to my circumstances, but they want me to understand their circumstances. They are asleep to my humanity. They won't wake for my deity. But now they are asleep for my humanity. They were awake when I was walking on water. But now that I need them, they are nowhere to be found. I'm trying to preach this thing today. And, 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 and they, 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 they were awake when I was raising the dead. But when I'm vulnerable myself, they went to sleep on me. So I come to the garden alone. And the garden is the place of pressing. And, and when God gets ready to press on you, he'll press you alone. The pressure got so great that Jesus had to pray three times. Now, Jesus had to pray three times. Come on now. Come on now. You know good and well, you ain't going to get through this thing without prayer. Father, if it be thy will, let this bitter cup pass from me. Yes, sir. Father, if it be your will, pass this. I just don't want to go through this. I'm tired. I don't want to go through this thing no more. I'm tired. I don't want to hurt anymore. I'm tired. I don't want to be humiliated anymore. They're going to strip me. I don't want to go through that. They're going to crucify me. I don't want to go through that. I've done enough. I've healed people. I've helped people. And now you want to put me on a public display. I don't want to show them my humanity. I didn't complain when you asked me to show them my deity. But now you're going to strip me and show them my humanity. Father, if it be thy will, don't let them see that I don't have it all together. Have you ever been there? Yes, sir. Messed up, tore up from the flow up, but you got to keep up appearances for people. Yes, sir. Because you don't want anybody to look at you and say, oh, she falling apart. They don't have it all together. Oh, I thought they was this and I thought they was that. Man, they got more problems than I got. Not knowing that God makes some of his best masterpieces with the broken pieces of your life. You're looking at a puzzle box and all you see are three, four, five hundred little pieces. Not knowing that when this piece get connected with that piece and that piece get connected with that piece, that the end result is going to be God's masterpiece. All things work together. Not just the good things, but the bad things. All things work together for the good of them. 
that love God. And, you, and, so, and so he was, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the Garden of Gethsemane is the place of pressing. And they call it the place of pressing because that is where they turn the olives into olive oil. It was there that they crushed the olive to get the oil out of it. The only way to get oil out of an olive, you got to press it. For every person in this room who's ever had anybody fall asleep on them, who's ever poured more into people than you got back yourself, who feel like in your own life you're working at a deficit, who's been, at, my mama would say, burning the candle at both ends. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And everybody you thought you could count on has forsaken you. I want you to know that when the pressing is over, the oil is going to flow. That's right. That's right. There is a glory that comes after the pressure. There, there is power that comes after the pressure. There is strength that comes out of the pressure. There is a deliverance that comes out of the pressure. David said, like did David said, no man cared for my soul. They cared for my talent. They cared about my money. They cared about your work ethic yes, or, or your talent but, but, or, or whatever it is that people care for you about. But my question is, do you care for my soul? Yes, yes. Carest thou not that we perish? Carest thou not sending me all these hearts and kisses and writing me all these notes and writing on my fan page and following me? Carest thou not? That I'm going through a storm in my life. I'm speaking for somebody this morning who yes, sir. is secretly suffering. Yes, sir. And wondering right now, does anybody care? Yes, sir. Does anybody care about what I'm going through? I'm smiling. I'm trying to hold it all together. But man, if you could see the pressure. And do y'all know what it's like? To when you feel like you have reached your max and you just can't take it anymore, then it seems like more and more just keeps coming. Piling on top of it. Lord, Lord, I can't take no more. Do you not see everything that I have been through so far? Have I not cried enough already? My knees ashy. They, they, they ground up because I've been on my knees so much in your presence calling on you and asking you to help me. Lord, have I not suffered enough? Carest thou not that I am perishing? Do you not care that I'm having anxiety attacks? Do you not care that I'm having suicidal thoughts at this moment? Do you not care that I am experiencing depression. Lord, do you not care? Some of us are so stressed out that as folks say, you can't see the forest for the trees. Yes, sir. You can't see what's right because all you can talk about is what's going wrong in your own life. And you played that movie over and over and over again. But this morning, you can cast that thing down. I, I want to make a passionate plea for people who are pressed above measure and beyond strength. And some of you are despaired of life itself and you feel like you're at a point in life where you just stop living. You ever felt like you're just going through the motions? Yes, yeah. Get up, get ready to go to work, come home, wash the car, yeah. I'm go do this and I'm gonna go through that. Get in a routine, life becomes normal. Circumstances become normal. There's friction in the house. It's been going on for so long. I don't pay any attention to it anymore. So now I'm just going through the motions. I know my children got issues, but I'm tired of talking to them. So I'm just going to leave it alone. So I'm just going to let it run on just as it is. I know that I did wrong, but I got too much pride to go back and correct the thing. So I'm just going to let it roll on as it, as it is. And, and, and some, some people can't get ahead in life is because they're living under the guilt of past pressure. It's not that other folk won't forgive you. You can't forgive your own self because of the pressure that you have brought in your own life. Do you ever just sit down and think, man, was I a fool? 
Where is the left side of my mind? What is going on? Man, I didn't know they should have put my face on the Cocoa Puffs box. Like, I don't, like, what do I have going on right now? Is this really me? Have you ever had a moment in your life where you had to check yourself? Have you ever had a moment in life where you had to get in the mirror and say, hey, man, now, hey, this me and you right here. Now, we know that we got this going on. We got that going on. Now, me or you, one of us got to go, and it ain't going to be me. Sometimes you got to say self. Self say, huh? Sometimes you got to have a come to Jesus moment with yourself. But can I tell you, the only way you can get out of the pressure is when you decide to get out of the pressure. Right. So many of y'all, you waiting on other folk to make an avenue for you. Waiting on other folk to make a decision for you. Well, I'm going to wait on them to tell me what I ought to do. Before you do anything, you got to check with your friend. Ask your friend what they going to do. What y'all think. But if God has been good to you, you ain't got to wait on nobody else. You ain't got to ask nobody else because God has promised you that he will be with you in good time and in bad time. So if he told me he's going to be with me, uh-huh. that's a promise. That's, all I need. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. that's assurance. That's it. So instead of me being bowed down under pressure, I can take my burdens to the Lord yeah. and leave them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And leave them there. Yeah. So, so, so why is it that you are living a pressured life? Why is it that you are allowing life To beat you down. When God is your ever present help. When God is your strength. I like the way the psalmist said. When the wicked. Even my enemies came upon me to eat my flesh. They stumbled. And they fell. Not knowing that God has built a hedge. A protection. Around his children. And no matter what the devil. No weapon. No weapon. Against me, no will shall be able to prosper. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say it wouldn't be formed. He said it's gonna form, but it's not gonna prosper. Yeah. That's why Job was saying, "You meant it for evil, yeah. Come on. but God meant it for good." Yes, well, that's yeah. worse. Pressure. That's a book. If pressure, as I said, will burst a steel pipe, yeah. what do you think pressure is doing? You get under pressure, and then you start having migraine, headaches, start having anxiety attacks, laying up in, in the middle of the night, chest feeling heavy, worrying and stressing out, sweating up your bed, worrying. Lord, what I'm going to do? How this going to work out? What you going to do about this? When if you would just give the issue to God, and not worry about the outcome. That's, to, that's our problem. We want to give God the problem and then know how he's going to work it out. We want to give God the issue and then monitor the issue on the island and say, hey, God, I want you to do this. God, I want you to do that. When you would just trust God to take care of the issue, God said, hey, the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. Children of Israel, what you going to do with Pharaoh's armor behind? We don't know. We just walking. God told us to get out. We're following our leader. We're going in the direction that they have told us to go. Well, look behind you. Pharaoh's army is drawing down on you. His chariots and their horses, they're coming. They're outnumbering y'all. They're going to take you out. We ain't worried about that. God just told us to go on. And because they did not worry about the circumstances, they did not worry about how God was going to fix it out. They walking through a river. They walking through a sea. Get on the other side. They ain't even got mud between their toes. God allowed them to get safely through the circumstance. But then while the enemy was coming in behind, God just closed it up because they followed his word because they followed his plan God took care of everything else Ooh, what's that scripture seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness. And all these things. Oh, the man will come. The woman will come. The job will come. All of that other stuff that you'll be waiting on will come when you first of all seek his kingdom. And when you do his will, some of us, we ask him for all, everything, A through Z, but we ain't got God. Yes, sir. But when you get God, you got to pack it. So he said, if you do my will, if you love me and serve me, all the other stuff, you ain't even going to have to worry about it. I'm going to just add it to you. It's just going to be a benefit. Man, I got up this morning and I, I went one foot hit the floor and I almost took off because I thought about something. I thought about something. Man, I was living in Montecatini, Terme, Italy, a hotbed of the coronavirus. Yes, I watched people on the streets at those last two weeks that, they, that we were there. I watched people laying on the side of the road waiting for ambulances to come pick them up. Mercy. There were people in a hotel right across from where we were staying at. One lady that had been dead in there over a week. And the moor had not even come to get her because at that time they were unaware as to whether the dead body would still be able to transmit the disease. It was so much confusion, so much chaos, so much uncertainty. Trying to get back home, flights are canceling. Yeah. Trying to get back home, this is happening, that's happening. Instead of being able to come home, we got to get on a bus, ride through corona-infested territory for 10 hours just to get to another airport so we'll be able to get home. But oh boy, when I touched my feet on American soil, when I got home, I ain't had no other choice but to say, thanks be unto God. I ain't had no other choice but to say, Lord, I thank you because he protected me. It was no other reason other than God had his hand on us. Don't look behind you. Don't look behind you. To hear that the host family that took care of us have both succumbed to the coronavirus in the very house that we were staying in. Not even three weeks after we left the hotel. Keep walking. God is good. Keep walking. Sometimes we don't understand, but God understands. Sometimes we don't know, and guess what? Everything ain't for you to know. That's right. Keep walking. Sometimes you just need to trust in God. Lord, I don't know, but I'm going to follow you. And even when I don't understand, Lord, I'm still going to follow you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to walk with you because the scripture said that the steps of a good man have been ordered by the Lord. Yes, sir. And Lord, as long as you order my steps, I know I'm going in a good direction. I know I'm going in a good direction. So church is very simple. Life will bring about pressure. Everything that you go through in this life is going to bring some type of pressure. You're praying right now and saying, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, increase my faith. Lord, make me stronger. Lord, make me stronger. Not knowing that in order for you to get stronger, you first of all got to go through some training. Not knowing that in order for you to get stronger, that after you go through some training, you got to go through your first match. Ha! Ah, now after you done got out of your first match, now you know what you're made of. Now you can get back in the training room and prepare yourself to get ready. Not knowing that whenever you are asking God to elevate you, take you to another level, do something in your life, that with every level comes a different level of pressure. Lord, that's good. Mercy. Lord I want to be a leader. Are you ready for the pressure? Are you Lord, I, I want to do this. I want to do that, man. You can't stand the pressure you got right now. What do you think you're going to do with added on pressure? Yeah. And some people, they're so pressured in life that they get bitter. And they get mad. Taking it out on other people. But it's a personal issue that you got to deal with. Yeah. And can I tell y'all, stop trying to fix other folks' stuff. And do like the Williams brother said, sweep around your own front door. Yes, sir. Get self-right. Get self in line. You got enough work you need to be doing on yourself. You ain't got time to be worried about nobody. Every day of your life ought to be learning moments. Ought to be 
working moments to where you are becoming closer and closer to that person that God would have you to be. Every single person in here this morning, you ain't never clay. Come on now. God is the potter. And even right now at this moment, you are on the potter's wheel. And anybody that's ever done any type of powder, you know that's, that's a difficult thing to do. Because if you're not careful, not paying attention, you're going around, going around, and just one little slip, you can cause an indention where you didn't want there to be an indention. You can cause a, a, a fall where you didn't want there to be a fall. So, so even in life as clay, you're going to experience some, some dips. Yes, sir. You're going to experience some falls. But as long as you stay on the powder's wheel, he's going to cause you that at the end of it, you're going to be his perfected work. Yes. You're going to be what God has called you to be. And as a child of God, you are not exempt from pressure. Yes. As a matter of fact, after you have become a child of God, that is when more pressure is going to be added to your life. Yes. Why, what reason the devil got to work hard when you belong to him? When you come into his house, eating at his table, driving his car, Doing this, it, why, 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 why in the world does the devil have to work hard when he already got you? It is at the moment that you say, devil, you know what? I'm tired of this. I can't do this no more. My soul is too important for me to be out here playing hooky and Russian roulette with you. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to put my eyes on the prize, and that is the goal of heaven. I dare not have lived my life going to church as much as I've gone to church, going to Bible class as much as I've gone to Bible class, go to every revival, go to every gospel meeting, singing as much as I sing, preaching as much as I preach, and die and lose my soul. The devil is a liar. I dare not allow that to happen. I'm going to work out my soul. Salvation. Yeah. Work it out. Yes, no. Work it out. And even under pressure, I can't give up. No, come on. No. I can't Help slack me. up. Help me. Help me. What, 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 what if, what if uh, every leader would just decide that when they get under pressure, they just go, oh, I, I can't deal with that. I'm just going to leave that alone. That's pressure. Yeah. God gives you what he knows you're able to have. Yeah. Yeah. We, we read where it says that God does not tempt us, but he will, with the temptation, prepare a way for us to escape. So that means, it lets me know that just as sure as the pressure arrived, God had already provided a route, an escape, for me to get out of it. He told him in scripture, he said, hey man, y'all worried about how you going to get this thing out, how you going to cast this thing out? He said, this thing goes not out, but by fasting. And prayer. Yeah. Some of us ain't prayed like we prayed a long time since COVID-19 been here. Yeah. Praying, oh Lord, I need my job. Oh Lord, keep me safe. Keep my family safe. Praying and praying. I wonder after God has allowed us to get on the other side of this thing, how many people are still going to be calling on his name? Yeah. I wonder, I wonder how many people are still going to be so, oh, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Please don't be calling me with no mess. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how many people are still going to be looking to Jesus the same way after we have gotten on the other side. Because y'all know it all too well. We, we, know how to, we know how to pray when trouble arise. We know how to call on God when we're going through something. Oh, Lord, deliver me. Lord, help me. Lord, make a way. And then when God does it, we act like we did it. Yeah. We act like we got something. He's walking around. Oh, look at what I did. Look at what I accomplished. Yeah. Not knowing that if it weren't for God giving you the ability to have strength in your body to lift up your limbs and to put one foot in front of the other and have your, your correct mind, you wouldn't even be able to do what you do. So in everything you do, church, give God the glory. Yeah. In everything you do, give God the glory. And you'll have victory at the end of it. Yes. And you won't have victory because you're so special. Or you're so strong. Or you're so mighty. Or you're just yeah, so, yeah. so equipped and built for battle. Yeah. No. But you will overcome because he has already overcome the world. Thank you, He's already overcome the world. He has already conquered death, hell, and the grave. Thank you, and if he can conquer all of that, he can conquer your pressure. Give it to God. Give it to him. You say, we sang that song, take your burdens to the Lord. 
and leave him there if you trust and never doubt. He'll surely bring you, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. So how many people this morning can say, Lord, take this pressure. Amen. Lord, this worry, mm -hmm. take it off of me. This anxiety, Lord, take it off of me. This, this, this stuff that I got going on in my head, Lord, take it away from I can't do anything with it, but I know in your hands, in the master's hands, yes. it's going to work out for my good and for his glory. Yes. I didn't say it always feel good, yeah. but it'll work out for our good, good. And, for, for good. and for his glory. Mm -hmm. The truth is, we can't stand depression. Yeah. If we were left up to ourselves, Every one of us in here right now will be somewhere locked up in an institution somewhere. Straight jacket. Looking from wall to wall like, is that Spongebob? What's going on up in here? Like, man, like. Because life will bring you to a point mentally to where you just feeling like you just about to snap. Ooh, one more person say something to me, man. I'm just going to go out. Ooh, she better not come back over here to my desk and say nothing after me. Because, man, if she come back over here, I got something I'm going to take. Pressure. And when you don't know how to take that stuff, it just builds up, builds up, builds up. And after a while, you find yourself just lashing out when you don't even want to lash out. Mad at people when you don't even want to be mad at people. Mad at yourself. Walking around looking like you've been sucking on persimmons. Just upset. Because pressure. God can take care of it. He can handle it. If you would, but only give it to him on this morning. God wants to take your burdens. He said in his word, he said, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. So that means all of those secret things, even that you're holding on to, that nobody else maybe even know about, but you yourself can't sleep at night because that stuff is still bothering you. That stuff, even he wants to take it and he wants to do away with it. But you got to bring it to God. And you got to give it to him. My brother, my sister, time has been far spent this morning. If you're here and you're dealing with pressure, how am I going to get through this? By prayer. By prayer. By giving it to God and allowing him to work in your life. He wants to take it. He wants to rid you of your worry and your pain. But hey, you, you got to first of all be like, hey, hey, but man, I know it's a lot of folk trying to get to you right now, Jesus. I ain't trying to get your autograph. I ain't trying to hug you. I ain't trying to shake your hand. If I could but touch the hem of your garment. I know things will be made better. In my, if I could but just get in your vicinity, Lord. If I can just get to your house, Lord. I know things will be made better in my he wants to take it. He wants to take care of it. So my brother, my sister, if you're here this morning and you're dealing with pressure, prayer will help you. And we want to pray with you this morning to help you get through this season of your life. I know you think you're bad. You can do it all by yourself. I know you think that. I know that you think you just superwoman, superman. You just pick up this building from the foundation right now and just lift it up. And join. I know you think that you're that powerful, but life if it could get Jesus to a point to where he said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. If the apostle Paul, as mighty as a man of God as he was, could say, hey, life got me to a point, man, I wanted to give up. If they could say that, then I know you can say the same thing this morning. That life has dealt me a hand or two. But I'm still here to tell the story that God has been good to me. And if you trust him like I trust him, hey, you'll do the same thing. If you're here this morning 
you find yourself outside of the ark of safety, you're not a child of God, you have not had your sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb, you have not yet been buried with him in the watery grave of baptism, oh, this is your opportunity. This is your day. The, what, why, why put off today for what you plan on doing on tomorrow? As y'all are aware as I am, we're living in uncertain times. We don't know, we don't know, as you know, said, you know, the old folks say, oh, you can't tell the winter from the summer, only by the bud of the tree. You know what I and oh, we're living in the last day. But y'all came to say we've been in the last day for now, going on twenty one hundred years. Since the day of Pentecost, you remember what Joel said in the last days, I pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see vision. Then on the day of Pentecost, when they had fully come, they were gathered together there in the upper room, Parthians, Medes, Eliamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, and Asia, they were gathered there together and they came down as a sound of, from, from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, filled the place where they were sitting and it sat upon them, clothed in tongues like it under fire and they began to speak in other tongues as the yeah. spirit gave them utterance and somebody said are these men not drunk they said no man these folk ain't drunk see it ain't for nine o'clock in the morning but this is that which was prophesied by Joel in the last day I pour my spirit yeah. upon all flesh so we've been in the last days for a long time right now so his return is imminent and as the scripture lets us know, we know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. But he's on his way. And he's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for his bride. A bride that is prepared for her husband. I want to be in that number. I, and, and matter of fact, I don't want to be in that number. I'm going to be in that number. I hope you meet me in the line. You see somebody doing backflips down Glory Hallelujah Street? That's Peterson right there. That's Peterson. He'd have made it in. But if you're here this morning, you're here this morning, you're outside of the ark of safety, we beck and we plead with you. Take this opportunity today to come to know Christ and the pardon of your sins. Take this opportunity today to receive salvation for yourself. You come by hearing this word. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17 lets us know that. So then faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Ain't no such thing as you have faith and you have not yet heard the word of God. Because it is after hearing the word of God that faith is culminated in the life of the believer. So after you hear the word of God, you believe that same. After belief, it comes a point in your life where you make a, a decision. Hey man, I know that this is what I'm doing. This is what Christ desires for me to do. So I'm going to leave my will, follow Christ's will. There's a change in my mind that is taking place that is going to show up in my life. It's going to show up in my action. That is repentance. After repentance, you come to a point where you are willing to confess Christ as your Savior, as your Lord, as your God, as your Master. You confess the sweetest name known in the mortal tongue, and that is that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. After confession, you are willing to be baptized with him in the watery grave of baptism. Have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you in this life and neither the life to come, and then you can join the church. I was, I'm just trying to make sure y'all awake. Trying to make sure y'all awake. All right. Trying to make sure y'all paying attention. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord to the church daily. Such as should be saved. So if he adding daily, ain't no such thing as a baptism of Sunday. Yes, sir. I'm all for Yes, sir. If you want to come on a Monday, guess what? We'll put you down on a Monday. You want to come on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whenever you want to come. The Lord is ready. And there's nothing hindering you from being baptized. So if you're here today, you're subject to the invitation. We beck and we plead. Why not take this opportunity? Get off and under the pressure and let God handle and deal with what you cannot. If you're subject to the invitation, we beck and we plead. Why not come to Jesus now and together we stand and sing the song. Of invitation. Be sweet, I know.